Hello, everyone. Once again, thank you so much for your time. Today, I'd like to continue on our discussion on multiple assets. Our topic for today's discussion is direct sequence and frequency hopping spec spectrum. For today's video, I'm going to concentrate a little bit more on frequency hopping. Earlier on, I have done a video on direct sequence spec spectrum. I will put that video under the description. So please go through the video if you're keen to know more about direct sequence spec spectrum. This is my email. If you have any question regards on today's discussion, please drop me an email. Before I continue, I'd like to urge you guys to support this channel by pressing the like and subscribe button. Please also turn on your notification bell in order to receive more info from this channel. Thank you so much. Spec spectrum communication system transmit information over a much wider bandwidth than necessary for transforming the information. So this is a simple definition of spec spectrum. In short, spec spectrum require a larger bandwidth to carry the same amount of data. Okay, the motivation to have a larger amount of bandwidth okay, is to allow multiple users sharing the same resource, which is the spectrum. Under the spec spectrum, there are actually two forms. One is direct sequence spec spectrum, denoted as DSSS. Another one is frequency hopping spec spectrum, which is also denoted as FHSS. For today's video, I'm going to concentrate more on frequency hopping spec spectrum. Let's do a very quick recall on direct sequence spec spectrum. In telecommunication, direct sequence spec spectrum, DSSS, is a spread spectrum modulation technique primarily used to reduce signal interference. So you see that direct sequence spec spectrum has a big advantage of reducing signal interference. The direct sequence modulation meet the transmit signal wider in bandwidth than the information bandwidth. Okay, so this I will show it to you shortly. After the despread or removal of the direct sequence modulation, the information bandwidth is restored, while the unintent and intent interference is actually reduced. Okay, so if you have not seen the previous video, okay, please see the previous video on direct sequence spec spectrum. So therefore, you will be able to understand this example. Okay, on that particular video, okay, I have shared with you, there are three users transmitting at the same time and also using the same frequency. I have shown clearly how can we recover back the original data. Over here, I just want to show it to you for example, for this case, user 1 has a data of 0, 0 to send. Instead of sending just the 2-bit over, under the direct sequence spec spectrum, user 1 actually sent 8-bit over to the recipient. So this is the meaning of transmit signal wider in bandwidth than the information bandwidth. Information bandwidth is only 2-bit, but they actually transmit 8-bit, which is much wider. So again, from this diagram here, you can see, okay, typically they only require this amount of bandwidth to send the data. However, when you actually utilize this direct sequence spec spectrum, you actually occupy the whole bandwidth to send the data over to the receiver. And again, on that particular video, I have shown it to you, how can we actually recover back the original data from respective user. Next. We are going to concentrate a little bit more on frequency hopping spec spectrum. Okay, so this is a method of transmitting radio signal okay, by rapidly changing the carrier frequency among many distinct frequency occupied a larger spectrum band. Okay, so I will come to this again. Okay, the change are controlled by a code known to both transmitter and receiver. FHSS is used to avoid interference and also to prevent anybody from listening our message. Okay, again, this animation, okay, let me show it to you again. Okay, for example, the transmitter send the message. 
okay, they hop around at the different carrier frequency. The receiver know the sequence and the receiver actually also hopping around to retrieve back the original message that is sent by the transmitter. So this is frequency hopping spec spectrum. This diagram here can okay, show the frequency hopping spec spectrum used by Bluetooth. Okay, this is time versus frequency. If you still recall, Bluetooth actually has 79 channel from zero to 78. So there are 79 channel. You can see from here, the message is broken into several parts and at particular time, they just slot into one of the channel to transmit the message. Can you see over here? So one channel is one megahertz. So the message break into many different parts and any point of time, they will occupy one channel to send the message up. So this is a sequence of this user. So basically first one is at channel one, channel two, and then vice versa. So this is how they send the message over to the receiver. However, you can also imagine what if there are more and more user. You can see over here, when there are more and more user, then there will be a high possibility that your message will collide with another user. And when your message actually collide with another user, you will actually lose your message. And therefore, when you are actually in a public transport, okay, you actually listen to your message via the Bluetooth receiver. Okay, you realize that sometimes the message actually jump, okay, which means that your music purposely miss a few bits of data or maybe a few seconds of data, split second of data, okay, because potentially, let's say this message is actually collide with another user and hence you will not be able to receive this message. And after that, you will be able to receive this message, for example, for this case. Hence, this is why sometimes when you are in a public transport, where there are many, many users, there is always a higher possibility of message collide with each other. And when the message actually collide with each other, you actually don't receive the message anymore. So therefore, sometimes when you listen to the music, there is some split second that the music actually jump. Okay, so this is what will be the biggest issue on frequency hopping spectrum. Next, okay, I'm going to quickly explain on Sigfox. Okay, Sigfox is also using this ultra narrow band with frequency hopping. They actually make this very resilient against interference. Okay, let me explain. Sigfox actually potentially able to send a message over a long range. When you are able to send a message over a long range, okay, you can imagine that there are going to be more and more user because it can send long range, right? Okay, as for Bluetooth, the typical range is about 10 meter or at the most 30 meter. Okay, so you potentially don't imagine that there will be a lot of user. Okay, but for Sigfox, okay, the range typically about kilometer and hence there will be much more more user as compared to Bluetooth. And because of this, okay, Sigfox actually duplicate the same message three times to ensure that they have a higher possibility to send the message over to the receiver. Okay, so let's take a look on Sigfox. Okay, Sigfox here, they have 192 kilohertz of bandwidth. Okay, every channel for Sigfox, they actually occupy 100 hertz. So there are 1,920 possible channels over here. So this is how Sigfox work. Firstly, when they receive the message, they will duplicate the message three times and they will put the message at three different channel and also three different time. And then that's it. They hope the message will be able to send over to the receiver. Okay, if there are not many user, I'm pretty sure that your message will be able to send over. Okay, let's quickly do a very quick comparison between direct sequence and frequency hopping. Okay, let's talk about data rate. Okay, from here you can see that direct sequence has a better data rate as compared to frequency hopping. Okay, for direct sequence, typically you can have 11 megabits per second as compared to frequency hopping. Typically you can have three megabits per second. Next, let's talk about signal to noise ratio. 
Okay, for signal to noise ratio, frequency hopping has a bigger signal to noise ratio as compared to direct sequence. With this, you can conclude that frequency hopping can actually go for a longer range because the signal strength is much, much bigger as compared to the noise. Let's come to the advantage and disadvantage of direct sequence. Okay, for direct sequence, okay, it is much more simpler to hide the signal. Sometimes the signal is underneath the noise, so it's much more easier for you to transmit without letting anybody know that you are actually transmitting. Okay, it is also less expensive as compared to frequency hopping. Okay, let's come to the disadvantage. Okay, a wide band channel is required, okay, so you know that they actually occupy a much larger bandwidth Therefore, you need to have a longer time when you actually want to send this message. Let's move on to frequency hopping. Okay, the system can actually program to avoid parts of the spectrum. Okay, remember, this is frequency hopping. For example, you know that potentially there are a few channels that are always occupied by lots of users. You can actually purposely program to avoid that part of spectrum so that you have a better chance to send over the message. The disadvantage is if it's congested, then you have issue. Come to the example, direct sequence is used by Wi-Fi, CDMA, and also LoRa. As for frequency hopping, is used by Bluetooth, Sigfox, and typically a lot of military is actually using this frequency hopping spectrum. With this, I'd like to end our discussion. Please help to like and subscribe. Thank you so much.